Here is a 2024 Honda Civic Sport in rally red over black interior. The LX and the Sport receive the same powertrain. You get the turbo when you go to the EXL and the Touring, and next year we're finally receiving the hybrid. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and is this going to be the variant you should get or go to the hybrid trim, which is going to have a mild refresh to the front that's gonna be similar to the Accord and the Pilot. Starting in the front is standard LED headlights and daytime runnings that integrate into the horizontal bar grill. When you go sedan opposed to hatch, it's a different grill setup. The badging sets outwards on the sedan and on the hatch, It'll set more inwards with a honeycomb pattern. The lower still receives over five inches of clearance with the matte black that's going to surround it because of the sport trim. Two engine options is housed. This is going to be the less powerful 2.0 liter inline four cylinder with 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque paired to a CVT transmission, achieving 30 MPGs for the city, 37 MPGs for the highway. If you're considering the HRV, it's basically the brother or sister to the Civic. And it's a SUV, but you're gonna be losing MPGs. That's gonna be at 25 for the city and 30 for the highway. When you go sport trim, you'll receive these 18 inch black alloy wheels. Standard is a 16 inch wheel and you're not going to receive this same wheel size until you go to the top tier. The EXL is actually a 17 inch wheel and that's going to have 180 horsepower out of the turbocharged engine. Gloss black will be on the side view mirror trim and you'll receive matte black around the window trims and we have the pin stripe to give a little bit more of a sport style. It is still going to have that European design. However, the hatchback takes it up a little bit more so because of how large the rear window is and you're gonna gain a little bit more cargo capacity. Comparing this to Rivals, this is one of the best in class for MPGs. Now the question at hand, should you wait and option the 25 model that will received the hybrid, which we haven't had since 2015. And we did receive an Insight, which was one of my favorite variants because it's more or less a Civic and you got great MPGs. I would tick the box for that one only because I'm wanting better MPGs, but if I'm wanting that sporty drive, you're still going to capture it with the Civic sedan. The Elantra hybrid now receives competition yet again, because that's one of the best in sales for Hyundai. Same thing with the Civic. When I'm thinking the powertrain and the platform is the same as the HRV, it gives me options instead of wanting to either go to a SUV, you can option this, or you can go into the hatchback. So I like that they give you three tiers with that. And if you need more sport, you can tick the box for the SI. So that way you capture all the fun to drive. The sport is going to get the exhaust outlet that's exposed with the matte black that's going to surround standard LED taillights and comparing against the Toyota Corolla, it's gonna look more sporty, but this is gonna have more interior space and it's a little bit more usable because it's a little bit more longer. Quick release going into 14.8 cubic feet of storage. Underneath the floor receives a spare tire. There isn't any lighting. You can split fold the whole bench in the back. Because I'm tall, I'll just slide in and it increases the cargo to the sedan. Six-way manual adjustment, four-way manual adjustment for the passenger. Heated front seats, leather starts on the EXL. Power seat adjustment for the driver goes into the Sport Touring and you'll get the Sport pedals. Headroom and leg room. The dashboard starts off with a honeycomb pattern that goes through the whole center. Climate control is standard. Dual climate control starts on the EXL. Four speakers with 180 watts. Go up to the EXL and you'll get eight speakers. 12 speakers through Bose is only on the Sport Touring trim. Leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist with the paddle shifts. And the gauge cluster has a digital reader on the side that you can go through an array of information for the driver, including the driving modes, which has Sport, normal and econ seven inch touch screen with apple carplay android oh, auto legendary am fm streaming bluetooth audio nine inch is only going to be option on this for touring put it into reverse and you get a reverse camera the trajectory will expand and you can go through different camera layouts to make it easy for the reversing usb 12 volt a storage tray 
wireless charging pad will be on the sport touring leather around the shifter and the key fob for the civic it's going to be a little bit more soft it opens up to a deep storage pocket you can move this little tub up or back dashboard and door panels integrating together you will not receive the gloss black inserts it's going to be more every day but it's going to be soft for your arms one touch up and down for the windows in a large storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out a moon roof starts on the exl back seat headroom and a leg room which is going to have a lot more so than the corolla no air vents or USB ports, no armrests, and the door is going to have the same materials that's found in the front, except it's going to have a little bit smaller of a door pocket. Sliding into the center, the floor isn't completely flat, but it's not going to be too big of a deal sharing feet, but in shoulder space because these seats are pretty comfortable and you sit downwards even though you sit upwards. So headroom isn't going to be bad for anyone that's six foot tall. 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque. The same powertrain as the HRV. So you kind of have three different choices. You can either go sedan, hatch, or SUV. So I, I like that they do that because it makes it a little bit more friendly for the buyer. And when you're thinking you need more power, well, you go up to the EXL. You get 180 horsepower and a turbo charge. You need more power than that, you go to the SI. And obviously, if you need to have full performance, you go to the Civic Type R. But that's not going to even be comparable to this. As for the everyday drive, it's a CVT transmission, so that's what it's going to do. Sipping fuel with a lot of room. Going up to the EXL is kind of the sweet spot. Styling, though, goes to the Sport trim or go up to the Sport Touring in which you'll have the dual exhaust outlets, and it's the only trim that offers it, which I wish that they did that with the sport trim and like I was saying on the exterior, blacking out all the badges. And a pro is how they have two different grills for the Civic, for the sedan and the hatch. It makes it look like two completely different vehicles and the rear also will indicate that. That's going to take me to my pros and cons and you've heard quite a bit of the pros, but to finish them up, the back seat is one of the best in class for room, for leg space for taller people and headroom, especially if you're considering the Corolla. The hatchback is even worse when you go into the Corolla, whereas in the Civic, it's still good. Comparing it against the Elantra, it's gonna have a lot of interior space, but the design to this is a little bit more retro and European, which makes it a little bit more sporty. As for the Volkswagen Jetta, it's going to be a little bit more of a sporty drive when you option the manual transmission, but the front feels a little bit more tight and cramped because it's not as opened up as this, in which the Elantra is the only other vehicle that's going to be opened with this much space in the front. And now that we're optioning a hybrid for 25, it's going to put a lot more competition against the Elantra. Going into the cons, the powertrain. It should only be a turbocharged option with the hybrid being the EXL and Sport trim instead of optioning this 2.0 with 158 horsepower. It's enough to get the vehicle motivated. However, because we have a HRV, just leave it in that vehicle. Turn radius is about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. The engine note will filter in, and that is to be expected because of the CVT transmission. You sit lower, but you still have better ground clearance than the majority of vehicles in its class because if you go Toyota it's going to be a little bit lower to the ground even though it looks a little bit more sporty this is going to look a little bit more grown up the big problem that I have with the sport trim is the sport touring trim is really where it looks the most sporty because you're getting the dual exhaust you're getting the more power variant I don't want the word sport and it's not going to give me the most po performance out of it Plus, it's not blackening out the badges. I do get the wheel upgrade, but I also receive an upgrade when I go into the Sport Touring. Going back to the main question, should you option the 25? Should you wait for the hybrid? I like the hybrid trims because you get great MPGs and you're getting this smooth ride. But when I'm thinking about the refresh, I'm also considering that it's going to look a lot like the Accord. The width of the vehicle doesn't feel overly wide. The steering has a little bit of weight 
and you have plenty of visibility through the windscreen and even though the windows seem small on the outside they're large so you can see everything around you going into the sport trim unlocks blind spot monitoring so therefore you have the safety also tipped but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank ocean honda for giving us this 2024 honda civic sport for our car review